Hello, hello. Hi, everybody. Oh, it is so full in this room right now. I'm loving it. Uh, I want to thank you guys so much for coming out to Digger Hertz 2.0. Uh, we have a really exciting lineup for you guys. Uh, we just want to mention a few things before we start. Uh, first thing is that the progression of the music is just going to be continuous, kind of. There'll, there will be breaks in between, but uh, feel free to clap as well, uh, just so you're not like, what do I do? Uh, also, please take photos and videos and put them on your social media. You can use the hashtag DiggerHertz or DiggerHertz 2.0, and you can follow us on our social media sites under DiggerHertz. We're on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. So... 
Other than that, cultural credit, it, for those of you interested, they're going to be at the end, at the door. Just go see Dr. Wallach. Uh, Dr. Wallach, just raise your hands in the back. There's the man. Woo! So without further ado, uh, I don't want to keep you all waiting. Let's have this night go and have fun listening to music, guys. Thank you for coming.
Happy birthday, brother, from another mother. Hope the other mother is happy for your birthday as the other mother. Makes no sense. How the hell are you, brother? Join the club. Welcome to the club. The wonderful world of 60. Uh, sorry I missed you, man. You know, like I said, have a happy birthday. Hope all is well. Talk to you soon, man. Take care, buddy. Miss you. Bye.
goodbye. Searching so carelessly for something that is never to be found, given on this precious item. Sometimes this item, love, comes in search of you. You overlook things. You become blind to love. Corinthians told us, love is patient. Love is kind. You will wait and love will be presented. You ever look too hard for something? You will never find it. As soon as you stop looking for it, it seems to pop up moments later. That is how love works sometimes. Don't go in search for love. Let love search for you. This silent cry in dark rooms. My light wasn't bright enough to cause the darkness to disappear. In their life, their life or, mine, or mine, my heart my sinks heart back sinks into back. old habits, old things. Falling, things. failing, falling, fleeting failing, moments fleeting I didn't moments. know. I didn't Rejection know. extended from rejection. me I to people on your to you. I, I rejected I the thousands of hugs thousands and kisses hugs from the warmth of a love I called on your name. I felt no dirt. Until you extended with arms open wide and generously, I almost missed it, focusing on what I couldn't, shouldn't do, and what wouldn't hold me together. False hopes, false gods, my passion was my idol, but your passion for me was vital for me to live. I called on your name. I knew your answer was free, hope, loved, and chosen, wanted, faithful, full, and fortified love I acknowledged. The more time I spend with you, the more I know this love. And the less I comprehend it, I accept, I accept it. it. The thousands of hugs and kisses from the warmth of a love I never knew. Until your poured out heart abandoned your throne to say I see you. I almost I know missed you. it. I love you. Focusing on what I couldn't, shouldn't do. Looking at my mistakes shattered on the ground. I came dragging myself. My broken, dirty messed up self to where you are. I'd apologize a billion times. Your response would always be forgiveness. Your kindness met me at my low, high hopes, a real living God. And your passion for me was vital for me to live. I called on your name. I accepted the thousands of hugs and kisses. And I'd spend another moment in your presence to hear you say, I love you once again. I called on your name. I know you'll answer. I know your answer. I felt like the embodiment of darkness. I wasn't, I wasn't just, just surrounded, surrounded by, by it. Shadows, Shadows delved, delved into, into my skin and chased, chased each other around, around in my blood. blood. My eyes blackened and my heart was just a hole. But then in desperation to escape this agony, I found, I found him. him. Making, making towering, towering mountains, mountains seem climbable, climbable, and the cool cold felt like soft sunshine. My bones illuminated, killing the monsters, eating me away. My air was no longer toxic. I could finally breathe and fill my lungs with fresh oxygen. He became, he became my, my, air, my air, my heart, my, heart, my, light. my light. He gave me a way to survive. He showed me the strong and powerful woman I could go to be. Additional weight dragged my heart, believing bold lies meant to crush the being of my doing, to prove I'm worth existing in the same space as my fellow man I knew I'd never be good enough. Is not a standard, it's helium, consumed to make me higher than the next man, till I'm not. I was the shattered vase used to hold your mom's favorite flowers, just waiting to be known again as Long trails of tears leave every piece of me drowning. My ultimate low feeling, no escape, being consumed by anxiety. No one, no thing pulled me out for good, but your open heart poured out love to rescue my now and forever. A purposeful sacrifice, even though I would question the price, it was enough. New reality defined, I can choose to reject but his strength is all I need. This freedom makes me more free. The more I see you, I understand what it means to truly live. The very moment you stepped in, peace followed Jesus, willing 
to sacrifice everything to be with me to know complete healing as he's writing this unfinished story x y z
say a few thanks before our last set from Dylan and Noah, which we're supposed to be setting stuff up right now, or are you all set, ready to go? Okay. I thought I was up here to kill time while you set up, but anyway, yeah, okay. Let's just make sure you guys are ready to go as soon as I'm done then. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to say a few thank yous before we uh, head into our final set here by uh, uh, Dylan and Noah. Uh, thanks, obviously, to Collective for allowing us to have this event here at uh, their their place of worship. Uh, so thanks to Pastor uh, Ben Collins and Jess Sorwanski, uh, and also to Clarence Mayu, who is their AV technician, who's been helping us out tonight with uh, the AV sound. Yes, give him a round of applause. Um, He's helped things uh, sound nice. He's also uh, been managing the slides for us and uh, managing the, the live stream. So this actually has been live streamed out. It will be archived. We'll have it be posted so uh, your friends that weren't here, you can tell them to watch the, the, the archived stream later. Uh, I want to thank the dean's office, obviously, for giving us cultural credit, right? Yeah? Right. Yeah. yeah. I got the scanner. Okay. Uh, I'll be over here by the uh, doors after they're set to scan your uh, ID cards. Hopefully, you all brought your ID cards, uh, and I can uh, make sure you get your cultural credit. Um, uh, thanks to all of you for coming out here tonight. Uh, it's it's no fun having a concert without an audience, so I thank you very much for coming out here and making our second year doing this. Is our second year doing Diggerhertz, our second year doing it at this venue. So thank you for uh, coming out and uh, giving us a crowd tonight. Uh, and then. Uh, I told a few of the students to stand after their pieces and to take the acknowledgement of the applause, and they didn't do that. So I'm going to call them out one by one right now and give them <laughs> one more round of applause here, okay? So first up, Rob. All right, yeah, my boy Rob, woo! Okay. Gabby is back there at the table. All right, Gabby. Let's go. Right. Marvin's back there hiding out in the, in, under the dark. Yeah, there's Marvin, okay. Christian was here. He had to bolt because he had a conflict with a theater thing. So I'm not going to give him a round of applause. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, Robert, uh, he is going to show up to help us pack up because he had an orchestra rehearsal because their concert's tomorrow night. Uh, and you can't get out of the last, that's the last concert, uh, the last rehearsal before a concert. Uh, Andrew's in the back back there. I saw him. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Larissa's up here. We got Nayo at the high top. John down here in the front. Sitting in the sweet spot. Okay. And of course, to my Ooh, left. Oh, man, <laughs> okay. Oh, God, no. To be determined whether they get a round of applause afterwards. Okay, so I'm gonna get off the stage and let these guys take over, right? Yeah, I hope you have your tomatoes ready. Thank you, Dr. Wallach. We really appreciate that. You're the best. <laughs> We're good. Let's go to Mars.
Good evening and welcome to Channel 366 News. I'm Steve Nibbett. Breaking news, the Republic of United Nations Space Division has just reported that the flagship of Project Romulus has officially exited our solar system with little to no issue. Project Romulus is, of course, the bold endeavor to send the very first colonists to the planet known as Kepler-22b in an effort to expand our reach into the farthest corners of our universe. The estimated time of arrival of the colonists on the planet is still classified, but RUN officials have repeatedly ensured us that we will know soon enough, and it may be sooner than we think. It is particularly fitting that the recent launch of the Romulus project took place on the 1st of March, which of course was the 500th anniversary of the launch of the Remus project, sent to Mars for the very same purpose and goals for interstellar outreach. The five million colonists currently inhabiting Mars are doing well and thriving, reports the Space Division, and are projected to reach their next benchmark for 7.5 million people within 100 years. In other news, local news agencies small step. Stopped feeling like a leaf from man Ages before when they stepped up on that launch pad Buckled, strapped, and rocked back The engines fired up and in an instant They were on that, that red rock They opened up the hatch and got to work upon the that sand That red rock Till the soil grew the crops and colonized that, that land rock Supply drops from earth gave them everything they need To establish Juno as the city that would never bleed
your god My forefathers when they stepped up on that red sod Dreamed of a paradise that people on earth would that have red rock. Juno was the first colony to be erected A hope for a capital like Rome was resurrected A need for renewable resources directed The construction of three colonies that were connected That red rock. First on the list, these people gotta breathe, right? Had to filter out the air so colonists could sleep tight Not worried about suffocating each night This air supply plant was entitled Rudd Tight That red rock Rudd Tight was the second colony on the planet The next task was to mine the ice below that spans it So they reached out, took more land and enhanced it Formed a settlement that turned mine ice to water Called it Gannet That red the final rock final settlement that they needed to be erected This is south and saying the Sorry in a few years though, the Martians showed no absence in the food supply of the colony named Gallus. That red rock. These four colonies living symbiotically created a society with hope of being part of the vision of a paradise that's beyond Earth. Cause who says Eden has to be on Earth? in the form of a falling diamond when it enters the atmosphere and touches the horizon we open up its contents and transport all the supplies into the colonies to ensure that the people there are thriving they're almost there and for the most part fully operational the colonies show promise yet not fully self-sustainable the fact that we've made it this far in space is just incredible with every single step we make driving us towards our final goal total habitation of the galaxy it's no longer just a fantasy. Stare at the horizon, sunset over cold sands. A falling diamond to help us build our homeland. Bring all the supplies in so we can live on the fourth rock. The failure of Orion allowed us to make a spacewalk a million miles away from the planet that we all once knew. The blue one with natural water and cities under one moon. Environments are chopped and burnt and beaten black into the ground. You kick and cuss at Mother Nature, yet she still and makes no sound. We've got a second chance, now just look what we've become. What we've become. It's been five revolutions since the last drop came. Crates of food and supplies to try to keep us sane. And in that decade, despite our efforts, things couldn't stay the same. It wasn't long before the colonies began to change. First, Gallus hoarded the food and distributed some rations. But before too long, they kept it for themselves without compassion and sealed themselves away and decided to take no action when the other colonies started starving. 
next And it turned quickly to lying, cheating, and stealing Raiding other colonies and leaving comrades bleeding Keeping water supplies locked away and never once revealing Why they let so many neighbors thirst to death then but I thought it would be best for them to leave the planet So they gathered up with tools they were able to win a panic And they made a makeshift rocket that could handle spatial transit They were 10 feet off the ground when they exploded Talking 5 million because under 2 We saw the diamond fly into the blue Most of our deaths were caused by the yield Young old the sick all too easy to kill Some of these people just can't take a hit We're surviving got precious that taste like flint Realization hit us like a shot Earth is abandoned us all on the red rock most noble goal, the search for truth and understanding. In ancient days, mankind looked to the stars and saw heroes in the cosmos. Heard we do the same by looking to that red world. The sacrifice will not be forgotten. Dear colonists of Project Lumos, this is the Republic of the United Nations Division. It is with a heavy heart and sincerest condolences that we must inform you of the recent decision to cease supply shipments sent to the capital city of Mars. Additionally, we advise that retrieval shuttles cannot be provided, as funding has recently been cut down in an unprecedented way that leaves us unable to prepare the sheer number of shuttles needed to bring you all back home. Fate has ordained that new colonies to set out all their schedules to go to explore Mars to rest in peace. The search for truth and understanding. In ancient days, mankind looked to the stars and saw heroes in the cosmos. And from this day onward, we do the same by looking to that red rock. Sacrifice will not be forgotten. Dear colonists of Project Lumos, this is your. Public